आई एम डॉक्टर राजीव के गुप्ता प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जूलॉजी जय नारायण व्यास यूनिवर्सिटी जोधपुर टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कन्फिग्रेशन एंड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ द इंसेक्ट हेड द प्राइमोस्ट रीजन इफ यू ऑब्जर्व एन ऑर्थोप्रॉइड इंसेक्ट देन यू कैन फाइंड आउट द हेड द थॉरिक्स एंड द एबडाम इन दिस सीक्वेंस ऑफ फिगर इनिशियली देयर आर टू एंटीना आई माउथ पार्ट्स आर देयर थॉरिक्स डिवाइडेड इन टू प्रोथोरिक्स मीजोथोरिक्स मेटाथोरिक्स एबडाम टेन सेगमेंट्स आर देयर कलमिनेटिंग इन टू जेनाइटेलिया विद स्पायरिकल ऑन ईच साइड एंड द विंग्स कवरिंग द होल एबडाम और फोल्डेड ऑन टू द होल ऑफ द एबडाम वेल हेड इज द एंटीरियर मोस्ट स्ट्रॉगली स्क्लोराइज कैप्स्यूल जॉइन टू द नेक्स्ट बॉडी रीजन ऑफ एन इंसेक्ट दैट इज द थॉरिक्स बाई अ फ्लेक्सीबल एंड मेम्ब्रेन सर्विक्स और नेक हेड बियर्स द माउथ पार्ट्स कंप्राइजिंग ऑफ लेबरम मैंडबिल मैगजिली एंड लेबियम वॉट आर द माउथ पार्ट्स लेबरम मैंडबिल मैगजिली एंड लेबियम एंड ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट सेंस ऑर्गन्स हैड कंटेन इम्पॉर्टेंट सेंस ऑर्गन्स हेड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इज मार्क बाई ग्रूव मोस्ट ऑफ विच इंडिकेट रिजिज ऑन द इन साइड एंड सम ऑफ दीज इन्फ्लेक्शन एक्सटेंड डीप इन टू द हेड फ्यूजिंग विद ईच अदर टू फॉर्म एन इंटरनल स्केलेटन वी विल सी इट लेटर दीज स्ट्रक्चर सर्व टू स्ट्रेंथ इन द हेड एंड प्रोवाइड अटैचमेंट फॉर मसल्स एज वेल एज सपोर्टिंग एंड प्रोटेक्टिंग द ब्रेन एंड फोर गट द मेन सेंस ऑर्गन ऑन द हेड आर ए पेयर ऑफ कंपाउंड आईज टिपिकली थ्री ऑसेलाइज सिंपल आईज एंड अ पेयर ऑफ एंटीनी The antennae are very variable in form and functions, but are usually concerned with mechanoreceptions and chemoreceptions. Now, before going further, we should understand what are the based upon the orientation, the types of head. So, depending upon the orientation, prognathous, hypognathous, and opisthognathous. See the figure. The central one is prognathous, where the appendages or the mouth parts are directed onto anterior side. In hypognathous, mouth parts are directed onto ventral side. and in opisthognathus they are directed little bit towards the posterior ventral position so the first prognathous examples are thysanura dermaptera coleoptera etc in hypognathus orthoptera diptera hymoptera and in opisthognathus types of head are homoptera heteroptera and siphonoptera now an orthoptroid head distinct head if you see it from dorsal side to ventral side this is a hypognathous head and on to the top most side there is a ignite a diacial line inverted y shaped below is the frontal suture surrounding the frons then from i there are the sulcus of jena following up to the epistomal suture or sulcus and labrum and clypeal plates are following the ventral side this is the correct figure and we will go through the remaining colored figures little bit variation that is the ignitial line doesn't touch the antennal socket in these diagrams this has to be remembered the head capsule is a continuously sclerized structure without external marking of segmentation but it is marked with a number of grooves now these grooves are there plenty of the grooves are there in between on the top on to the lateral side on to the posterior side some of these grooves are merely surfacial sulcus on a single plate or others are sutures made by junction of two or more plates the sulci and sutures on head demarc different areas on the capsule in front view There is an ignitial line which marks the point of rupture for molting on top of head. यानी जो बढ़ता हुआ insect होता है वो हमेशा ignitial line से head की wall को तोड़ कर बाहर निकलता है It moves downward in inverted बाई shaped frontal sutures. That is ignitial line moves downward in inverted बाई shaped frontal sutures terminating near antennal sockets or joining with the antennal sockets. Usually another subocular ocular suture originates from below the compound eyes frontogenal suture that moves down meeting with epistomal or frontoclypeal sutures which separates upper part of head from that of supraclypeal or often clypeus area below to mid ocellus is termed as subocular area and below the compound eye is known as subocular area so below the ocelli is the subocular below the eye that is the subocular area the folding of cuticle that surrounds a compound eye is termed as circumocular sulcus this sulcus is not marked in this diagram however near the eye this sulcus is always present more prom prominent so towards the frontal surface of head on to posterior surface this sulcus is not so prominent other folds are around the antennal base 
termed as circumantinal sulcus and below to median ocellus called as sub ocellar sulcus. Sometimes upper and lateral margin also of vertex oblique jana or jana may contain an evaginated sharply catenate sulcus. What is there? Sometimes upper and lateral margins of vertex that is the margin that connects with the thorax onto the posterior side is also having an evaginated sharply catenate sulcus. Often post jana is also separated from hypostome by a hypostomal sulcus. You can see this in this diagram. Now, in the posterior view of head, the plates posterior to jana are post jana and pokes occiput and circling foramen of magnum. Foramen of magnum, you, I hope you follow it. Foramen of magnum, we also have a foramen of magnum onto the posterior end of our skull. It connects with cervix membrane posteriorly. In diptera, foramen of magnum connects with the labium through a narrow plate called gula. In the D diagram, you may find the gula distinctly as a narrow plate. In remaining diagram, there is no gula. Lateral view of the head. Now, after observing the front view, we should come to the lateral side. The lower part of epistomal sulcus, that is just above the labrum, subgenus sulcus, that is just above the mandible, and the third or the posterior tentorial pits supports the zone of mouth part that is below these sulci there are mouth parts attached onto the lower surface. In grasshopper clypeus hangs down post to the labrum, clypeus is there, hypostome is followed by mandibles and posterior to the maxillae and labium are seated. Well, so look at this diagram you will find that epistomal sulcus subgenus sulcus and posterior tentorial pits supports the zone of mouth parts. However, mouth is not located there, we will see it just now. In grasshopper clypeus hangs down post to labrum and hypostome is followed by mandibles and posterior to them maxillae and labium are seated. In next lecture, we will go through the mouth configuration of the Siberium, the derivation of mouth parts into lateral view or inner view and then the following part will be the endoskeleton of the head because insects do not possess any kind of skeleton or the bony skeleton what they have, how it functions and how it is regulated in the head region. So, that is in the next lecture. Thank you.